The contender who does better than expected will probably emerge as the victor of next week's opening Republican primary debate. The stakes are therefore quite high for someone like Ron DeSantis, who launched his campaign with a lot of name recognition, a lot of cash, and a lot of hype. However, the threshold is quite low for someone like Vivek Ramaswamy, a businessman with no prior political experience and almost little name recognition. Ramaswamy's policy ideas are wacky, and out of sync with his own personal narrative. Despite being only 38 years old, just three years over the Constitution's minimum age limit to hold the highest office in the land, he wants to raise the voting age to 25 unless the 18-year-old can pass a citizenship test or has served for six months in the military or as a first responder. Despite his own family's immigrant history, he wants to eliminate the constitutional right of birthright citizenship. Oh, there's also a ton more. He wants to take on the Mexican cartels using the US military. He believes that the NRA should assist in providing AK-47s to every Taiwanese family. As president, he claims he will stop monitoring carbon dioxide emissions. He thinks the FBI should be abolished and that the federal government should be reduced by 75%. And yet, despite a head-shaking agenda, mind-boggling ideas, including questioning the government's explanation of the 9-11 attacks, and a whiplash-inducing reaction from observers who see him as a wholly unvarnished newcomer to the game, Ramaswamy is having a moment, right this very instant. He is now polling third in many polls, and second in one recent survey. So it's no surprise that a protosanta super PAC has reportedly advised the Florida governor to take a sledgehammer to him in the debate. Ramaswamy has adopted a Pete Buttigieg slash Beto O'Rourke media strategy, which means he does interviews anytime, anywhere, with almost anybody. But just being media savvy doesn't fully explain what's powering his campaign. Confidence, in my opinion, best describes the Ramaswamy micro tsunami. Anyone who enters the presidential race must not be timid. However, most politicians, particularly Trump, appear to believe only half of what they say and are content to recite mantras that have been proven successful in polls in order to get support. Watch out for Ramaswamy. He is the most ardent of true believers, the kind that can persuade voters just through the strength of his convictions, regardless of whether they are sincere or not. I collaborated extensively with George W. Bush's outstanding press secretary, Karen Hughes, during the campaigns, for which I served as top media strategist. She was a good illustration of the strength of assurance. I frequently witnessed her exhausting reporters, sometimes including yourself and even Bush, not so much with her ideas but rather with the tenacity of her views and the ferocity of her persuasive enthusiasm. Her blue Malamute eyes would pounce on you with such passion that you would eventually just submit to her, thinking, geez, if she feels this strongly about it, it must be true. Ramaswamy, on the other hand, is a policy confidence man, the kind of bullshitter and snake oil salesman that gave origin to the name con man. His unwavering confidence may astound a crowd. He may frequently be mistaken, but he is never uncertain. This is the same man who at the Iowa State Fair rapped along to an Eminem song without hesitation. Which leads us to the impending inaugural discussion, which Trump might or might not attend. Never underestimate the power of confidence, particularly during a political battle. I've trained presidential candidates for debates, and in my opinion, giving them an unnatural amount of confidence is the key to winning over the commentators, viewers, and ultimately, the electorate.